Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Funded Trader Interviews. Today, we have a very special guest who just claimed a $400,000 funded. Without further ado, please introduce yourself, sir. Uh, my name is Tommy Lai. And where are you from? I'm from San Francisco, California, uh, currently uh, residing in Pacifica, California, which is about like 15 minutes away. Okay, awesome. And what's your educational background? So my educational background, I uh, graduated from San Francisco State uh, University uh, with a degree in psychology. So how did you so, get your start in Forex if, if you are a psychology major? Yeah, uh, so basically uh, in, I believe about like, like 2015, that's when I was um, introduced to trading. Um, a friend of mine at the time, I'm pretty sure I was just on Facebook one day and I just remember seeing like an MT4, like, you know, classic kind of like format, you know, you see just all the pairs just moving like crazy and you see all these numbers flying and just all the colors. And so that was my first, you know, like introduction to seeing it, you know, just, just seeing it and I was just, like instantly hooked, like instantly just curious. You know, I was just fascinated to uh, just want to learn about it. And uh, from there, I reached out to him and like, I was just asking him some questions, you know. And uh, what helped was uh, he also skateboarded too. Uh, I skateboard. And so like, it was, it was cool that he skated, I skated. So like, it was nice we had that kind of like common interest. And then, uh, so I just, just kind of learned from him a little bit, you know, and he, uh, um, I remember he introduced me to IML actually. So that was like my, like first kind of community like format, you know, style of, of being introduced to uh, training. And then uh, from there, uh, I uh, went to Wall Street Academy and that's where I actually learned how to trade. So For IML sure. was, yeah, so IML was kind of like, you know, you're kind of like dabbling in it, you know, but it was more like MLM and yeah, it was just amazing. kind of, so it just, so it wasn't really like my base foundation of learning how to trade, you know, but um, yeah, Wall Street Academy was actually where I learned how to trade for sure. And so how did you end up finding the funded trader? I found the funded trader just on Instagram. I remember I just saw the ad and I was just like, dang, 400K, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, I was awesome. just like, that's, yeah, I was just blown away by like how large of an account size they offered. Yeah, and I was so, just like, man, yeah, I just thought it was like, it was just, just an amazing opportunity. And it just looked like I wanted to try it. And so how long did it take you from when you started trading until now to become funded? So I started in 2015. Um, and I was trading for probably about like a year and a half. I quit for about two and a half years. So total took me probably about four years to get to here. Well, yeah. that's, uh, that's perfect because, you know, as long as you don't give up that day can be today, you know, as long as you begin and you have a, a day one, well, the, the final day when you finally become funded is just around the corner. And so how do you feel about the funded trader community? I feel, I feel good about it. Um, I know that the discord is pretty much where the, 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 I'd say the main community is, um, but I definitely think that it's a great community. You know, people uh, like myself are on the same path and um, also, uh, like how uh, there's an invitation to this uh, this trade summit for me guys. Uh, I was invited to uh, this trade summit. So yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of community building. I love how you guys are are about the uh, the customers and the uh, the team itself and the traders. And I like I love that. So I definitely think the it's a growing community, you know. And I, I'm definitely grateful to be a part of it. Would so. you want to go to that uh, forex summit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, it was, it was kind of fast, but I mean, I was just like, absolutely. I mean, what's cool about it is my original mentor is going to be there. 
Um, so I think it would just be like crazy to see him in person, you know, because, yeah. you know, I think it would, it's kind of like, you know, you have like social media friends and mentors and whatnot, but to see them in person and it's just like, wow, like, like they're a real person, you know, yeah, to, to thank them cool. for, for the, the knowledge that they gave you and, you know, the success you've had over time because of that. And so what would you, what would you tell someone who was looking to get funded with the funded trader? I would say uh, like number one is don't rush it because the last thing you want to do is, is take like, like, you know, like, like 50 challenges or so and just try to rush into getting funded. So really like take your time with it and really create a plan. And, and I would say, write things down. Like you really got to write down your plan, you know, because if you stay very objective with your trading, it, it, it gives your mind clarity with what you're doing. So so you have to have a plan. You need to know how to manage risk. You need to know, you know, like you need to treat it with respect. You know, trading is such a blessing. And like a lot of people, they just just kind of just kind of look at it as like some get rich quick thing. And it's not, you know, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of preparation and it takes a lot of uh, a lot of failures. But like I would say that like my number one piece of advice is to really understand how you trade. And, and write everything down and really understand like exactly what you look for and just and and just take it and treat it with respect you know like especially with these account sizes how much you can scale you there's so much room for error with trading yeah, that sure. one little mistake can wipe out your whole career one one like if you like say let's say instead of a 10 lot you accidentally dropped a hundred lot and let's say you're just like, oh, you just didn't think about it. It's like something like that, you know, can actually be pretty significant. So like you really want to just treat trading like a business and just really, you know, think like a business person, you know, like how are you going to scale this business? How are you going to sustain the business? Right. Because it's not even about passing the challenge. It's about maintaining you know, many people can pass, right? It's like a seven or like eight percent like like passing rate, but very few people can actually hold the account longer than three months. You know, exactly. like like so so I would like definitely say really just write down your plan, be very clear about what you look for, um, and 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 have a and have a checklist, you know. Like I'm not perfect with everything, but I really try to have a checklist because it really keeps my brain just focused on like, this is what I look for. It's not a mystery. I've worked it out. This is exactly what makes sense. And until these things are checked off, I'm not even going to like consider a trade because it's just, you know, like I found that having a checklist really helps. Yeah, and so all those confluences line up and all you have to do is enter, you know, don't be afraid. Is scared money doesn't make money and as long as you are following your plan and you have perfect risk management not even perfect just some risk management some people yeah. don't even have risk management they just enter praying that they're gonna uh, get the trade to go their way but as soon as you do that <laughs> it goes the opposite way yeah. every time and so yeah. from that yeah. you know What's something that you you wish you did differently when you first began? Since you've had all this knowledge and and wisdom with trading, what's something that you you wish you did differently? Something I wish I did differently was not taking a break and you know consciously deciding that this is going to be what I'm going to be doing because I would have just just had more time. You know, like, even though I've, I, I'm definitely in a good place, I wish I had just not taken that, that two and a half year break from trading, you know, but I mean, sometimes, you know, things line up, you know, the universe makes things happen for a reason. And um, so, yeah, but I, yeah, I would say definitely, you know, like I, I wish I had not taken a break, um, you know, so I would say that would be the only thing I would for sure. And what motivated you in the first place to become a funded trader? 
I'd say what motivated me was freedom. Um, absolutely. You know, freedom for me was like really the number one thing that I really wanted, you know, um, like, you know, like working a full-time job and like, you know, like 40 to 45 hours a week, right. With like travel commute, it adds up, you know, and, and, and I think like after realizing the fact that I wanted it so bad, it just really motivated me to take it seriously, you know, like really like dive deep. It's because there's people that trade and there's people that really trade, you know, and they're yeah. really for real about it. And there's like, you know, in all fields, there's people who are, you know, like weekend warriors, there's people who are for real about it. And I think that once you get for real about it, it shifts, you know, it just shifts your, your, um, like it shifts your whole like perspective on it, you know, when like you just realize that, yeah, this is, this is for real. This is it. You know, this is, I know it's going to be hard, but it's, it's going to be worth it. Yeah. When so. you're, when you're about that lifestyle, you heard it here first, folks, when you're about that lifestyle, it will all work out. Just keep grinding and keep pushing forward. And so how much time do you say you, you have dedicated to studying or looking at the charts? I would say, um, now I would say probably like at least three, like three to four hours a day in the morning is probably like plenty of time for me. You know, in fact, I was actually learning that, you know, you really don't want to spend more than four hours a day on the charts because your brain has like a bandwidth, you know, and like, if you, if you like push it too hard, it can like almost be like, like overkill. So I would say like, just really like dedicate the morning to like, you know, four hours, three, four hours max is pretty good, especially in the morning, your brain is like, it's more alert, it's more awake. And so like, just use that time to like, just get better with your analysis and whatnot. So for me, yeah, about like three to four hours. Every morning. So do you find yourself setting alerts? Or do you actually sit in front of the charts? Um, so yeah, I usually sit in front of the charts. Um, and sometimes I set alerts, you know, for like, like breaks of structure and whatnot, but I pretty much like to be on the charts for sure. It's like, unless it's like a limit order, yeah. right. Then I'll set an alert. If it wicks out, you know, and I just snag a like a super crazy good limit order for sure. I'll set something like that. You know. And what is a hard lesson that trading has taught you? A hard lesson trading has taught me is that um, I would say the need to always be right, you know, and that just because you think you're right doesn't mean you'll actually be right. And it's okay to be wrong too. It's okay to, it's okay to take losses in life, but it's about, it's about, it's about minimizing risk. So I would definitely say the big, yeah, is, is, is the need to always be right. Like, don't always try to be right. Be methodical in your process and be clean with it. But like, like get out of the mindset of, of, of taking losses personally, you know, cause it's, it's, exactly. it's a probabilities game. It's a probabilities game. And if you have edge to your system, then, you know, then you shouldn't take it so personal. In fact, I was actually, I mean, like, like, I, like, uh, I think what also helped me was in realizing that there's four types of trades. There's good losses and there's bad losses. There's good wins and there's bad wins. And if you can shift your thinking into like, it's cause not every win is good. Not every yeah. loss is bad because you could have a really bad win. Right. So for example, you, you just threw out some random position size, you set on stop loss and you just prayed, you yeah. know, and you had no basis exactly. to your trade. You could make, you know, whatever on that trade, but it like, was it a good trade? Probably not. I mean, but you still made money, but it's still not a good win. Right. Because that shit could have easily inversed on you. Yeah. And, and you would have been like, you know, like not happy. Right. And the same as vice versa, you could have a, a good loss as well, which is, um, you know, it's controlled, it's managed, it's position sized accordingly, and you set a stop loss. It's that simple, you know? So it's like, I think changing 
the the thinking to you know like 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 was this a good win bad win good loss bad loss it shifts your thinking so i think that like that was the biggest lesson for me is in you know changing how i think about wins and losses as a loss not being bad it's part of the game and that you have to you know treat it with respect you know so that way you know because you cannot grow an account if you're not protecting your account yes, and i like realized that too that was another lesson protect and, your and, capital for sure yeah like you yeah like you cannot grow an account if you're not protecting it if you're risking 10 percent per trade you know three four trades you look the other way and your account is gone and so <laughs> yeah. i mean the, the thing with sure, the, sure. the whole the the bad losses or good losses you know sometimes you get taken out of a trade but then it actually goes your direction which just shows like maybe you entered a little bit early maybe you weren't paying close attention to your actual confluences and what you are looking for to enter sometimes it yeah. barely just takes you out and then it goes your yeah. direction you know some people oh, yeah. get so angry oh man i lost the trade but in reality you just learned something that, yeah, your analysis in this scenario was correct. And, you know, there's different strategies that people utilize. Like sometimes if they get stopped out, they'll enter again with the same like type of risk or, or less risk because they've already lost, you know, not necessarily revenge trading, just trying to sort of scale in the position. Maybe you were too early, you get in and then that, that entry actually does end up going your direction. So there's many different ways to, to go about it, but as long as you understand, hey, I can win and still not be happy because I just entered for no reason and I don't know why I entered, but I won. That doesn't, that doesn't you know, fulfill you more than when you actually analyze something correctly and then it goes your way. Oh, that like, what's better than that, absolutely. you know? Hell yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. That is 100% exactly. true. It's better to based on a good analysis and you did everything correct, then like taking a paper cut and be like, damn it. Like that was stupid. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So yeah, hundred percent. I agree with you. Absolutely. So when you do take a few losses or in a row or in a string of losses, what, what do you do or what helps you come back from that? I would say, uh, so, so, uh, so what I do is I really try to one, like understand, okay, so was this a good loss or a bad loss? And I need to truly be honest with myself, you know, like, like, was it a trade based on some scale and continuation that, that wasn't really like time that well. And I was just trying to ride the wave. And I, so, so it, it's like, I try to avoid, you know, like, like paper cuts, but if I do get stopped out, like for me, I tend to get stopped. I noticed my average is like maybe three, four losses in a row, like maybe five. But but something I do is I basically just keep trading. I keep on just going. And maybe like something I could do is um, is I'll reduce my my risk on that next trade just to, you know, psychologically kind of ease myself back into it. Um, or like something else I do is I just like take some time off Right, I'll reassess the charts. I'll just breathe. I'll just, I'll just kind of, uh, I'll take a step back, and pretty much, I'll just get back to it. You know, um, as long as I'm taking trades based on my trade plan, you know, I can't see the thing is like you can't really retract so hard, right? You can't get too like withdrawn from the charts. You kind of have to keep going, yeah. and. Um, I to just treat the same trade as, as the last one, but, you know, I still just make sure that I'm being, you know, just strictly objective. I'm being, you know, just very, just vigilant on my process. And I just try to just time my entry the best that I can, you know, but, but I try to just get back in, you know, I try to just get back in. And so how many accounts have you blown if you have taken more than, you know, five, six losses? How many accounts do you think you've blown in total? Um, probably like, it's probably like, like 10, it's maybe 15. 
Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, uh, I've heard that a lot from different trainers. Some are in the, like the fifties, you know, but <laughs> then, no, you're, yeah, yeah. then you're going, hey. you're going ham on the markets. You need to, if, if you've, if you've clapped over 50 accounts, you need to definitely take a step back and look at what you're doing. Cause you're just taking yeah. money into the fire. Like, <laughs> no, so. yeah, it's and like, I think that's what a lot of people struggle with is they don't really look at like, like they don't really look at what they're really like doing wrong. And they just keep on repeating the same you know, like just hitting themselves over the head with a hammer, you know, expecting, you know, like, like this account to go, but I mean, like, no, like it doesn't really matter how many accounts people blow, you know, it, it's like most important is that you are truly learning and progressing with each loss and really, you know, trying to understand like what you did wrong and, and, um, and, um, yeah, like it, yeah, trading takes time. It, it takes a lot of time. It doesn't really matter how many accounts people lose or blow. You know, it's just, you know, like the fact is you keep going and that's that's how the game is, you know? Exactly. It's almost like the this scenario. I can't quite recall what game or movie it's from, but like every time you lose an account, you click rewind or, or you kind of go back to the beginning. You start over and then you kind of look at the past and you look at the the mistakes you've made and you're like, okay, I, I need to not do this, this and that. And then for your next attempt, you, you get the account blown for some other reason. And then you reset again and again, until you figure out every, everything you're doing wrong, you work out every kink that has been holding you back. And then eventually you'll be at the final reset and you won't need to reset anymore. It'll just be steady growth from there on out. And so Another question I wanted to ask you is what kind of trader are you? Like, are you a, a swing trader, scalper, intraday? I'd say, uh, I'd say swing trading with a day, I would say a day trading, scalping entry mentality with a swing trade, long-term perspective on the trade. So I would just say swing trading like as a whole, but, but I would say in terms of actually taking the entry, it's more of a, a scalping kind of like sniping. Yeah. So you, so you're sniping mentality. 10 miles down the range. You see the target all the way. It's like a dot. And then you're yeah. trying to aim for that. And so you enter yes. a trade and you're holding for the entire wave. I mean, you can't ask for a better because that gives you better chances for a, a really nice risk to reward. You minimize your risk. And you're able to actually, if you just enter with a really good position, especially since you have this ginormous $400,000 account, which by the way, you can actually get up to 600,000. If you were to take another challenge, yeah, yeah. merge that, yeah. you can have $600,000 and then, you know, 10%, hello, 60,000 just landed in your bank. I mean, right. guys, honestly, right. with these, with these funded accounts, like, the potential is limitless. It's unbelievable, you know. One account can change your life, your family's, your your future generations' life, because you can have nothing. You can save up money for a funded account, and then you're there. You've achieved everyone's dream and goal. Yeah, man, it's 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 truly amazing what trading can give people if they see it. Some people don't see it. And I think it's just, um, you know, it's not for everyone, but I think it's like for people like you and myself, we just kind of, we intuitively see the vision and we just can, you know, kind of grab onto it. It's like, you see opportunity and it just makes sense, you know, like why would people trade, you know, like 50 like hours a week to make, you know, less than a thousand dollars a week. And I get it. Like you should have passion for a job, but at a certain point you gotta, you gotta have to like, you know, know like where you want to take your life, you know, and it's like some people don't see themselves making more than 50k a year. You know, some yeah. people think that 50k in one month is bad. And I think yeah. it's like who you hang out with is like going to determine like just your standards, you know. I mean, I've got a friend, uh, shout out to Jacob Reader. Um, man, this dude is like 23 years old, bro. Like he makes like a hundred and like 20 grand a month. I mean, in the past three months, I've known him. 
this dude has been making like pretty, pretty, you know, like, like, like six for your months. Yeah. And like, it's pretty, pretty consistent. This dude is, let's say maybe like, he'll make like 50 K in a month, but he's, you know, he's just flowing along this path. But that's still like, 50 K in one. He just made a year salary in 30 days. Like yeah. you're, you're minimizing that. I want to, I want to oh, reiterate yeah. guys, 50 K <laughs> and that's still very, very high compared to almost all the percentage you can think of in 99. I don't know, but exactly. So, and yeah. uh, would you like to give us an insight into your strategy with your charts? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to be going over my strategy with you guys here. Um, so basically the most important thing that I do is I always zoom out. So, so, uh, so number one is I always start on the daily time frame. If I want, I can go to like uh, the weekly, we can see like where volume and momentum has been going. We go to the monthly, we can see, okay. Then the past month, right. There's been a lot of bullish momentum, right? So clearly we can see that in the past, right. Let's say two candles, right. That's about 60 days of price action. It's been very bullish. Okay, we go down to the weekly, we confirm it. There's been a lot of bullish movement. We go down to the daily. So this is actually where it's, it's, it's pretty important. So, so, uh, so basically, so what I do is I first measure a Fibonacci retracement on the daily time frame just to confirm that we are still in a continuation. So, so basically what I'll do is I'll measure my Fibs from low to high. Okay, we go from 100% to zero. The market basically pushed up and it came back down at 38.2 on the daily, which basically means that the market is in a continuation. I'll draw this random line to signify this is the daily time frame breaking structure. So, so if we go back, okay, let's kind of uh, let's go back to a replay. So here, a lot of people would say, okay, it's bearish, right? So then if we play another candle, we could see that it got tested right here. And then here it's being tested again, but it's kind of rejecting this 32 point, which means that we're probably going to be in a continuation of the bullish move. So then basically once we see, okay, so pretty much it's, it's been rejecting. So we know that, okay, it's probably going to, it's probably, it's probably going to continue bullish. Okay, we take that off. So now it's like basically from here, let's go back to, let's say right there. So pretty much once I know that it's probably going to reject 32 on the daily, I can go down to H4 for, for more price action confirmation. So then once we know, okay, again, right, let's kind of signify that this again was our 3x red line on the daily. It was somewhere around there. Yeah, 38.2 retracement. Yeah, so that's, yeah, so that's pretty much where that line was on the daily. So now what we're doing is we're going to be drawing our H1 fibs, which is basically going to measure the the uh, the counter trend line on H1. So we start with a bullish candle to signify the low. So in this example, it's probably here. Let's see. So basically, what I do is I see like okay, so on, so on H1, we need to make sure that 382 has been reached at a minimum, and once it has, we then have to readjust our fibs. So in this example. We measure from low to high. We see the OK market came down to 32, so we can take that off. And so basically, I'm going to be measuring until I see a valid pullback that has not been broken yet. So in this example, OK, so we, it's right here. And then here, right, so the market pushes up. And so this is where we're going to counter trend, right? So So now we're basically measuring the counter trend line. And so how I do that is I take a, the counter trend line itself. Let's make this. Uh, okay, so basically we're now measuring the counter trend line. So we need to see how far it's gonna push. So then once the market has broken the counter trend line and the way that we know that is it has to touch at least three points, right? You can't like try to force the counter trend line. You can't say like, this is the counter trend line. Yeah. Like you can't really like go like that. Well, I guess you could, but it's still, it hasn't reached 38 too. So it's, it's still, it, it's mellow. So, 
Okay, so basically, uh, so once we know that the market has, has created a valid pullback, I'm hitting at least 32, then I'll draw a random, also signify a structure break. Okay, so once the market has broken that counter trend line and it's also broken structure, that's when the setup is pretty much complete. And that's only the setup of requirements. So I have what's called setup uh, requirements, and I've also got the entry requirements. So basically, okay, so our setup is complete. Okay, we've hit all factors. The counter trend line has been broken and structure has been broken and closed. See, so a lot of people, they kind of, they don't wait for the candle to close. So this candle right here pretty much signifies that it's, 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 it's complete. So now that we have our trade setup complete, we can now shift our fibs a little bit to there. Now we can go down to M5 or, okay, we can go down M30. We can see more details. M15, okay, we see it broken out. So now we can actually take our micro fibs, which is actually, it's a, it's a little nugget for you guys, but I think that if you guys use micro fibs as well, you can get some crazy good entries. So, so basically, so, so I'm now drawing my micro fib and finding a valid pullback as well. So basically the micro fib or the entry requirement is pretty much the exact same as my trade requirement, just on a, on a smaller scale. So, so this is the setup again. Now the entry requirement is gonna be pretty much the exact same. You know, so, so pretty much I'm doing the exact same thing, but just on a microscopic level. So now okay, what we're doing is we're now playing the replay. So we need to see a valid pullback. 32 so let's let's shift our food a little bit up right these are all 23s and so what i'm looking for is i'm actually looking for a micro pullback of at least 32 ideally somewhere around the counter trend line and h1 structure itself on h1 so we can get more confluence so let's shift this okay so here this is micro fibs we're still at 23.6 so it's not valid yet Okay, so it's it's hit 32 and look, it's also pretty much in line with H1 structure, which is like pretty, there's there's some good confluence there. I like that. So let's draw our counter trend line on M5. And we're pretty much seeing the exact same thing, just, just on a microscopic level. So now that it broke out of the counter trend line on M5, we can draw a structure point here. I kind of want to see it pull back a little bit farther, but let's 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 see what it does. Okay, so it did. So, okay, so in this example, like something I like to do is wait, but but I've also found too that the micro counter trend line structure break should be not as 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 picky with exact entry. Okay, so basically, okay, so it broke out, it broke structure. And then once it did that, so 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 basically this little candle here is the exact same thing as this on H1. Yeah. It's just a smaller version. So that's the bigger version. This is the mini version. And then once it's done all that, so so I found that once like that breaks, just enter on that candle. You know, because like it it's like it's I don't get too picky with it because right there is pretty much where I would take the entry. As soon as that closed, boom, right there. And this is also important as well, right? So, so okay, so once we know our entry, that's pretty much where I would take the entry. Then I'll set my stop loss, which I like to do pretty much, I like to take my stop loss pretty much where M15 um, ends the M15, with the moving averages. The M15 fib 78.6 is also, as yeah, you, that, you have it lined up right there. It just yeah, happens exactly. to be where the moving average is, but the seventy-eight point six is like the final, final res um, place where the fib can hold the market. So, yeah, exactly. But the thing is, like, like I like to also use the ATR as well. So I like to take okay. So let's say thirty-five pips is my stop loss, and you, if you see, just kind of where my arrow here. Let's yeah. Yeah, if you see where my cross is right there, it says the ATR. 
and you see it moving. So right now it's at 11. So what I'll do is I'll take, so I'll pretty much add 11 to 35, which is what? So 35 plus 11 is, is uh, 45, 46. And then I'll like to do about another half because I, I noticed it, it definitely doesn't always respect that. So I like to widen it a little bit. So let's say, okay, so 46. So I added the 11 and then I'll take half of that, which is gonna be, let's say six. So I'll take 46 plus six is what? It's like 52. So that this is pretty much the stop loss right there. So, so the formula is basically 1.5 times the ATR on M15. That's pretty much the formula for, at least for me, that's what I found works pretty well. And then, so once we see our stop loss is set, all right, then we can take our, our take profit now to, right, this is TP2 of H1, which is pretty much right there. And I like to hit at least a one to two risk to reward, um, right? It just makes more sense. So then, okay, so basically the trade step's complete, right? The entry is complete. And also if you wanna add more confirmation too, like, like for example, I like to use the moving averages crossing over on lower timeframes as a shift in momentum. So that's just an added confirmation. Right, so you see all three moving averages are now below price. And we also see the RSI is above 50. And also this, uh, this is a paid indicator. It's called the uh, uh, logistic map index. And, and we see also it just, it pretty much uh, went from red to green. So we've also seen some, some shifting momentum from these two additional indicators. On M15 also, it's also turned green. So that's pretty pretty valid for the shift in momentum. So now let's play the let's play the chart and let's see what happens. And these trades I actually took from uh, this morning. So so I made forty seven thousand from these trades. Thousand. Yeah. So you I made must 47... be, You must be on the leaderboards. That <laughs> I think I'm on like number ten <laughs> of like. Uh, hey! Of the... Shout out to Tommy. Let's go. So then we see that you know, it pretty much respected the plan. Um, and uh, that's pretty much how I trade. It's, it's pretty simple. You know, your yeah. higher time frame bias, your H1 fibs, blah, blah, blah. Just wait for the market to counter trend break, right? retest and you get in. Perfect, perfect risk management. And then you're cashing out trades based on the account size you have. You know, having a $400 account, you would only make a, a certain amount. Having a four hundred thousand dollar account, shout out to you, legend. You're able to make such good profits that you know only people can dream about. So amazing! And I have just one one final question. If you want to um, hop out of the chart, oh yeah, of course. Uh, long term, what do you believe the funded trader is going to do for the industry? Man, I think it's it's probably gonna be very life changing for many people who like who uh, who pay their dues and put in the work. But it's just gonna make so many people so free, and that's what it's about, you know, is freedom and just having you know a skill set on the side that you can scale and travel the world and just do whatever. You know, it's it's just such a blessing, you know. And I think that anyone who like pays the price and who, who sees the light with these opportunities and goes all in, it could just be so life-changing. Seriously, like I plan on retiring my mom, you know, traveling the world, you know, like raising a family with trading and, you know, you could put like trading profits into other assets and just do so much, you know? So I'm so blessed for the funny trader and I just want to grow with this company and just take full advantage, you know? Yeah. And I'm, it's very grateful and I'm very happy. So yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, awesome. So, and with that, thank you for watching this week's Funded Trader interview and I hope you all have a great day.